Makes you wonder, doesn't it? If thoughts can do that to water, imagine what our thoughts can do to us. One of the most interesting uh, experiments with random event generators occurred um, when it was really out of time. Some of the Princeton investigators and some of the other ones decided that they would try to see whether or not you could affect a, a, a random machine after it had run. So they converted it, instead of having a computer with a visual screen, they had a, com a computerized situation that was um, audio tapes. And they had it with left cl uh, clicks in the left ear and clicks in the right ear. And they already played this with nobody listening to it, so that it, it, it already ran. They put that in a vault, and they then gave the, the tape, the already run tape, to a participant and said, take it home, I want you to listen to it, and I want you to, to make more left ear clicks than right ear clicks with it. Send your intention to it. So the person did, they handed back the tape, and they played it, and lo and behold, and they played the one in the vault too, and they discovered that they were both the same, and they both had more left clicks than right clicks. So what was going on here? Well, it wasn't as though the person who was the participant had actually affected it at the moment he was listening to it. His thoughts and his attention had moved back down the timeline and affected it at the moment it was generated. Most people don't affect reality in a consistent, substantial way because they don't believe they can. Whatever way we observe the world around us is what comes back to us. And the reason why my life, for instance, is so lacking in joy and happiness and fulfillment is because my focus is lacking in those same things exactly. If we're victims, we should ask ourselves, have I a victim mentality? If I'm continually meeting misfortunes and accidents and tragedies, maybe it's because my mentality is basically attuned to accepting that this is the way life is, and so it happens. Now, why can I not achieve those things? Fundamentally, through lack of focus. The average person loses their attention span every six to 10 seconds per minute. When one wants to focus, intent you want to be a singleness of mind that's why some of the old occult teachings teach people to focus on a flame a match flame in fact so that you learn to bring your attention into a very sharp channel so that the energy density becomes greater the mind is structured in layers just like the universe is structured in layers from superficial to profound and if we use the mind at a very superficial level of ordinary thought, we have very limited power. We can barely move a speck of dust across a tabletop without using our hands. So weak can consciousness be. But at the deepest level of consciousness, consciousness creates universes. But we always wonder then, don't we? When we wish for all of those to be able to heal with the touch and to raise the dead and to manifest a loaf of bread in our hand, and we always wonder why we can't do that, but we can never ask a question that we don't already know the answer to. And the answer is, it's because we don't believe we could do it, and it interferes with our agenda of our own personal addictions that define us. We have never had enough time to care for anyone else other than our own emotional addictive needs. Thank you for letting me stay here. I know I'm a bit much sometimes, and that it's been tough after Bob and all. <laughs> and um, 
You've just been so wonderful. I mean, I make a mess and, well, I clean up afterwards, but it's not really your style. Sometimes I think you make me sane. Me? <laughs> the day I make someone sane, they're in trouble. <laughs> anyway, um, I made you something as a thank you gift. I went through your pictures and picked my favorite ones. And it took me forever because there's so many good ones. <laughs> this. That's for all the wonderful photos you will be taking. Today. Thank you. Why are we here? If thoughts would do that to water, imagine what our thoughts. Is there a substance of thought? This is a dream that I'm dreaming. Just as in a dream, you dream different characters can emerge and come out to you and talk to you and meet you and so forth. It's possible to go to another level of dreaming where you can become each of the characters that you dream. Go backward and forward in time. Time is relative. It goes backwards and it goes backwards in time. Information. Time reversal symmetry. Of course, we can go backward and forward in time. It has occurred when it was reality in the quantum field existing simultaneously. The actual event that experience. There literally are different worlds in which we live. There's the macroscopic world that we see. There's the world of our cells. There's the world of our atoms. There's the world of our nuclei. These are each totally different worlds. They have their own language. They have their own mathematics. They're not just small. Each is totally different. But they're complementary. Because I am my atoms, but I am also my cells. I'm also my macroscopic physiology. It's all true. They're just different levels of truth. The deepest level of truth uncovered by science and by philosophy is the fundamental truth of unity. At that deepest subnuclear level of our reality, you and I are literally one, one, one. Chris gradually led into some notions that there was an invisible connection between everything. Physicists give us a name, they call it entanglement. 